Before we get into today's video, I want to give a huge shout out to Patreon member Justin Heverly for being an awesome patron. This man has been supporting the channel the past couple months. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Thank you for all you do. And with that out of the way, let's get into today's video. We now return to the Transformers. What's up everyone, James here, and we are back with King Grimlock, and he will be battling the Red Wizard, and it's awesome. You may be asking, but James, who is the Red Wizard? Don't worry, you'll find out in a bit. So, we open right where we left off, with Grimlock about to be ambushed by this trio of Cyclops, who work for the Golden One. Their goal isn't to capture Grimlock, their goal is to take his head. However, when they ambush Grimlock, their attacks have no effect on him. Grimlock knocks them back with his tail, and then obliterates the Cyclops with what I like to call his Nova Flame. If you know where that's from, comment down below. Now, in the episode Madman's Paradise in the original animated Transformer series, the Golden One had Cyclops who were a part of his army, except they were like tree-like centaurs whose bottom half wasn't a horse but looked to be like black wolves slash warhogs. The Cyclops in the episode I honestly think are a little bit more formidable than the Cyclops here, because they had a variety of weapons on hand. Though Grimlock easily takes out the Cyclops, he isn't out of the woods yet. Pun intended. Suddenly, this creature called a Ridgeworm wraps its vines around Grimlock and pulls him into its mouth. Grimlock transforms and tries to rip himself free. He manages to rip one of the worm's stone teeth. At that moment, diving into the worm's mouth to save Grimlock is Arco. She slices the vines wrapped around Grimlock. After Grimlock is free, we get a great team up between him and Arco. Grimlock whips out his Energon sword, and he and Arco go to town, slicing their way out of the Ridge Worm's mouth. What's interesting here is the discussion they have afterwards. Grimlock asks Arco who Soltron is. Arco answers that it's the Golden One's god he worships, and his symbol Grimlock is wearing, referring to the Autobot insignia on his chest. So this is why earlier the Cyclops held weapons with the Autobot symbol on them. I know this can be confusing for some people, all this talk of Soltron and Anti-Sun. I promise you though, this will all make sense by the end of the series. All you need to know right now is the Golden One was the hero who liberated this world with the help of Optimus Prime at some point, but as time has gone by, he has become a tyrannical ruler who has essentially created his own religion, his own cult really, that he is the messiah the chosen one of. Grimlock makes it clear he doesn't worship some sun god. He mentions the god he worships is the Necrobot. Who Grimlock is referring to is Mortalis, the god of death. Now in the IDW universe, Mortalis is a part of the Guiding Hand, the first five Cybertronians ever created. He is also the creator of Trypticon, and in some legends considered to be the one who sparked the God War the first civil war on Cybertron. Grimlock tells Arco that all Dinobots worship Mortalis and hope the day their spark burns out, they leave so much death in their wake that Mortalis reaches capacity in his death logs. So like the Vikings, the Dinobots are not enslaved by the fear of death, but instead look forward to it and wish to have a glorious death. This is why Grimlock is initially mad at Arco for helping him, because he believes if he died by the Ridge Worm, he thinks Mortalis would have been proud of him. I'm pretty sure Grimlock being a worshipper of Mortalis is a new detail Steve Orlando has added to his character. If it's not, let me know in the comments below where else this has been mentioned before. Either way though, I really like it because it's unique and is something else that separates the Dinobots from the Autobots. Grimlock draws his sword after Arco tells him he won't last a day in Mononia without her help. Arco stands there unshaken, not afraid of Grimlock, and tells him she does not fear death, since the Golden One threatens her life every day. She says, I will not beg for your respect, but I will take it. She strikes Grimlock with her sword, but he doesn't attack her, he walks away. Grimlock tells her he likes her anger and her intelligence. However, at the end of the day, she is still too weak for him to crush. They eventually come to an agreement. Arco will teach Grimlock about Mononia if he teaches her about strength, because she wishes to be the strongest Mononia. Grimlock agrees and says, we start today. 
At that moment, they come across a village burning, currently being invaded by the Red Wizard's forces. Arco informs Grimlock this is Angloria, a minor fishing village. Grimlock questions Arco if she would let them be crushed, since they are Minonian like her. Arco throws the same words Grimlock threw at her father in the last video. If she saves them, then they won't get stronger. When Grimlock looks closer, he sees the Red Wizard's forces consist of these wood bots. This is yet another thing similar to Madman's Paradise, except the Red Wizard's wood servants in the episode were a lot more robotic and not formidable whatsoever. When Arco suggests to Grimlock they move on and leave Angloria to its fate, Grimlock offers Arco a lesson in strength. He says, there is no strength in crushing the weak. These wood bots can fight us. Arco replies, lead on, Lord Grimlock. We then see Arco riding Grimlock in his dino mode, charging the battlefield, and smashing through the Woodbots. As they are decimating the Woodbots, Grimlock tries to speak to them, but Arco informs him it's useless. The Woodbots are mindless, not sentient. Despite that though, Grimlock looks at them as a part of the Transformer family. After Grimlock and Arco finish up defeating the Woodbots, Grimlock inspects their bodies and realizes they are not like Decepticons, Autobots, or Dinobots. They have no spark. They aren't alive. Arco explains the Red Wizard is a necromancer. He uses Woodbots to bring death to the living so he can use their souls to create more Woodbots. Grimlock despises this because all Transformers are given a spark at birth. It's what gives them freedom and makes them sentient. Whereas the Red Wizard gives these wooden bots life only to live as zombies that are slaves to his will. Grimlock decides that he is going to end the Red Wizard. Arco tries to warn him that the Red Wizard is powerful and that even the Golden One tries to avoid him. She's also pissed that Grimlock will fight for the Anglorians but not for her people. From here we go to the Golden One. One of the Cyclops who attacked Grimlock survived and is pleading for his life. The Golden One zaps him into dust. Even though Clada questions if he's still sure that Grimlock will not fight for the people of Minonia, the Golden One is still not worried about him. He's still confident that Grimlock only fights for himself and at the end of the day will disappoint the Minonians. And he mentions if Grimlock battles the Red Wizard, he will basically be doing him a favor. Back at Angloria, Grimlock declares he is going to battle the Red Wizard and calls for any Anglorians who want to fight to join him. This is where this big divide between him and Arco takes place, because Arco reminds Grimlock this is exactly what her people asked him to do for them. Grimlock argues though that this isn't him fighting for Anglorians, this is him avenging his own kind. But Arco doesn't see it that way. She sees it as Grimlock being a hypocrite, because he will fight for people weaker than him if it pertains to a personal grudge. She storms off and tells Grimlock he has nothing to teach her. He is weak like everyone else. Weeks go by, and in the Rotlands, the home of the Red Wizard, he continues to grow his army. In Angloria, during those weeks, Grimlock has trained the Anglorians, preparing them for the battle to come against the Red Wizard. When it comes to Arco, she has completely walked away from Grimlock, and has plans of her own, and we'll see what that is by the end of this video. We see her strapping herself with the Woodbot's armor, she then remembers when her father, during one of the Golden One's attacks at sea, left his people on the other ships to die instead of listening to her pleas to stay and help them. She now believes her father and Grimlock don't embody true strength, but there is someone who does. She comes across the body of one of the Cyclops Grimlock killed earlier and takes his sword. What Arco doesn't know is going on right now is Valrith is being burnt to the ground by the Golden One. The people are running for their freaking lives. The Golden One says, run, stay, hope, and pray. It makes no difference. They will all burn as the face of Soltron smiles. Meanwhile, Grimlock and the Anglorians reach the Rotlands. Suddenly, they get attacked by some Woodbots. Initially, the Anglorians are afraid, but Grimlock reminds them of their training and pushes them to fight back and take their freedom. Grimlock and the Anglorians start taking out the Woodbots. At that moment though, Grimlock notices they're about to be flanked, not by more Woodbots, but by the Red Wizard's entire Red Army. 
Grimlock by himself starts taking on the entire army. This is so badass. He is slicing through them with his Energon sword. Even though he is surrounded, Grimlock isn't slowing down. He transforms into his dino mode and takes out the red army with his jaws and tail. He ends up leaving the rest of the army to the Anglorians as he smashes his way through the red wizard's front gates and comes face to face with the necromancer. The red wizard begins to overwhelm Grimlock with his magic. He tells Grimlock that he was foolish to believe he could defeat him in his own keep. Grimlock reveals he recognizes his voice and knows he is no wizard. He is a Quintesson. Grimlock rips off his cloak, revealing his true form. Now, in Madman's Paradise, the Red Wizard was also revealed to be a Quintesson, who was banished to the dimension of Menonia for practicing sorcery. In the episode, we learn the Quintessons would banish their own to various dimensions for various crimes. Now, we don't learn if that's the same case here, but it is interesting. Grimlock ends up stabbing the Quintesson with his tail, completely smashing through its body. As the Quintesson dies, it tells Grimlock that Soltron's Energon is spread throughout all of Menonia and warns him he won't be enough to defeat the Golden One. Now we'll learn what he means by that by the end of this series. In the meantime though, Grimlock and the Anglorians are victorious. Arnak and his people who survived the Golden One's raid arrive in the Rotlands. He informs Grimlock of the Golden One's attack and asks the whereabouts of his daughter Arco. Grimlock tells him that Arco isn't here and that he will fight for the people of Menonia against the Golden One. He says, Optimus says freedom is the right of all sentient beings, but he is wrong. Justice is the right of all sentient beings. Returning to Arco, the one person she was talking about earlier that she believes embodies true strength in Menonia is the Golden One. She arrives at his citadel and decides to join him in order to gain more strength. That's the end of the video. The next video will be the end of King Grimlock, where he will battle the Golden One. Now go ahead and check out my latest Beast Wars video. I hope you all enjoyed this. Please hit that like button, comment below your thoughts, and a lot of you aren't subscribed to the channel, so please do it. It's a great way to help the channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Other than that, have an awesome day and always remember every day to transform and go beyond. Me Grimlock no bozo, me king.